So um, it's mentioned that Lex is, is sponsoring this event. Um, like I said, at the start of this workshop, I was a paying customer before Lex was a SuperPath partner. I think the tool's awesome. What I like most about it is that it doesn't do the writing for you, but it makes your own writing better. So like if you really want to get like a deep focused writing session, it's actually so much easier to do with Lex. And then I found actually, once I had been using Lex for a while and then went back to a Google doc, it felt very lonely. Like there's nobody to talk to, you know, there's nobody giving you feedback. You can't easily, um, you know, use, use the chat to like talk about the article, get ideas, et cetera. So anyways, it's a great tool, Lex.page. Sammy's is going to show us a few things in the product and then also would encourage people if you want to try it out yourself, they've uh, provided a promo code for us, SP15, get 15% off your first month or your first year. Uh, I will put that in the chat too. And once you start talking, Sammy, I'm going to go nuts in the live chat. I have a bunch of stuff I have to post from our last one and for this one. I'll go ahead and hand it over to you. Would you mind introducing yourself? Give us the high level overview of Lex and then we'd love to see some of the new stuff you've been working on. Awesome. Yeah, no. Uh, and thanks so much for the for the kind intro. So um, yeah, as Jimmy said, uh, Lex is really focused on being an AI support tool for actually quality writing. Um, and we try to always keep in mind the things that AI is both really, really good at in, in terms of writing and also what humans don't like doing and then make it really easy for, for AI to feed in there and then save the interesting parts that are important for human thinking and also important for the writing to actually be good and save those for humans. Um, and as a quick aside, just because this is a uh, vibe coding session, I think it's always interesting to go into the difference between AI support for writing or for vibe coding, because we, we think about this problem a lot. Um, and actually, our, our founder, Nathan, has a great piece on this that I'm happy to circulate if people are interested. Um, but essentially, with vibe coding, you, you ask for what you want, and then the code either works or doesn't, and you'll get feedback, and you'll feed it back into the AI, and it'll give you help. Um, most writing, like so there's some just like purely informative writing where you either communicate or don't. But for the most part, people care about the actual words and the actual quality. Um, so that's, that's one piece. And then also, and this is where Lex comes in a lot. Um, one of the biggest ways to make AI coding help good is giving it your code base. Like it's so intuitive to give context for really good responses. Um, with writing, a lot of the context that you need for good AI support um, do exist on your computer. But it's, it's less intuitive to queue that up into your writing process. So we try to make, make that really easy to give the AI um, that you're using the context behind what you're writing, the style you want to write, and the background information you need. So, so that's like a big piece of what we do. Um, also, awesome. uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll jump into the, um, the presentation part. And what I'm going to be demoing is uh, a newsletter, um, which is quite... Uh, common for us to make. Uh, we, we write all of our newsletters in Lex, um, unsurprisingly. Um, so, Hey, Sammy, and, real and quick, I'm as we jump into this, sorry. sorry, I'm so sorry to interrupt you. I'm just getting a quick error from Riverside that you may have two Riverside tabs open and that it may affect oh, the recording. Oh, that's recording. funny. It said to keep this tab open, but I can oh. close it. This sorry, is my up upload page. Am I supposed to you, kill it? You, actually, you don't need that one. Just the one that you're using for pre oh, okay. presenting. Cool. Sorry about that, everybody. Yeah, yeah. No. It, also, I it, apologize it, if I'm always like looking around. I'm just like looking at the live chat, getting links. So is it fixed now or uh, no? Uh, I think I think we're good. Yeah, we're good. Sorry, I interrupted okay. you though. Yeah, no worries. Um, okay, so the yeah, so so definitely, um, if you have any questions, you could just reach me on my email, hello at lex page. If I have extra time, happy to answer questions uh, for this demo. So this is what our actually new um, homepage looks like, which is uh, we're, we're we're launching it very soon. And whenever I write something new, I'll jump into like the folder that I write it in. So this is our newsletter folder, and I, I have like a doc I threw together for the presentation. Um, our workflow for these newsletters. Um, goes, it starts on, honestly in Slack. We'll just throw together everything we want to talk about. And this is basically like a Word doc or Google doc. It's just a, a word processing environment. But then you click here and you have an AI assistant that automatically can read your document. And then also you can feed in other background information. So the really cool thing in this workflow is that I made it automatic that anytime I make a new document in my newsletter folder, it automatically sees everything 
in my newsletter folder. So basically every newsletter we've ever written is in this folder. So without doing anything, just opening a document and pasting in bullet points from Slack, it already has all this reference material of how I like to write my newsletters and everything we've ever covered. Um, then I say what I want to cover. And again, just AI is so good at pattern matching. So to have all this background makes it so much more helpful when you ask for help. Um, so I'm going to write this newsletter. I have these high, high level bullets, which are helpful, but again, pretty high level. And then I have um, this background. The next step, which is relatively new and we actually talk about in this newsletter, is one of my favorites, which is voice to text. Um, so essentially, if I already wrote like a guide on this, I could attach it here. And that's super easy. I could just have the URL to the guide or if it's a PDF or if it's in a Google Doc, like all the, uh, if it's a Lex document, I'll pull it. So that's all easy. But if I don't have anything written, the easiest thing I found is just to talk about it. So I'll, I'll just do this live um, Hit transcribe. So the new start page, the focus behind that is that it has better navigation to find the documents you want. You could pin documents. And there's a new start option. And I want to portray this start option as responding to how a lot of people start writing with a chat instead of a blank document now. And we're trying to facilitate that process for people that do it. Google Drive, for obvious reasons, um, a lot of people write in Google Drive, either with coworkers or half their process is still there. This makes it more frictionless to work with Lex. Voice to text, it, it makes it easier to uh, brain dump context into Lex um, if you don't already have a link uh, or a YouTube video or a PDF or a doc that already covers this info, uh, voice to text makes it really easy to give that information to AI and have them structure it for you. We're adding two new LLMs. Um, could you just look into my previous um, newsletters where I launch LLMs, use that as a structure and then fill in the differences uh, for these specific LLMs, just add in real facts about how they work and why someone might want to use them for writing. And then talk about our uh, inline AI improvements, which are basically, we make it easier to revise specific sentences or statements um, in line the doc in the document. And um, Lex will see the context of the whole document, but zone in on what you're focused on. And right now, it just tells you what to do and you copy paste, but we're working on an apply button to make it more like cursor. So that's, that's yeah, what I do. That's crazy. It's just like a totally different way to interact with the computer. It's so cool. It's so fun. And, and so, yeah, it just transcribes all this. And then, yeah, soon it'll show you. It'll spin up a draft for me. Um, Can I ask you a quick question while it's generating? Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, one person asked, uh, how does Lex do with style guides? Can you give it a style guide and have it abide by it? Absolutely. That's one of our favorite use cases. Basically, we think of... Um, so I'm going to just show a new chat. You can always go back to previous chats here. Um, so here, context tags, um, you can give, actually, I'm going to show you a really good example. Um, you can create a context tag. Is this something that I, oh, no, no, this is, I, I attached it, sorry. You can really easily, all I did for this is clicked add and Substack import, and it just pulls all these samples from Substack. And then just attaching this in, will make you write like those writing samples. But also you could just drop in a file that has a style guide and say like, follow this style guide. And then That's all awesome. your edits are going to be based off that. That's awesome. Can I see a couple? Sorry, I know we have so much to cover. We're getting some yeah. really good questions that I was hoping to throw at you. One person asked, yeah. um, can I give it context by providing it with a Substack URL? Yeah, yeah, that's what I just did. Um, then just the URL, that's it. Yeah, yeah, I'll, yeah, yeah. I can show you a... Um, yeah, this is our founder Substack. So... I'll, I can just show it to you live. Um, you just go prompt builder, context tag, attach. Oh, I'll say Nate Substack, add Substack import. And then, so right now it only grabs 12 posts and that's mostly so that it doesn't overload the context window. And you could pick latest posts or top posts. And it'll just throw them all in there. Um, and you also, if you have specific ones you want to add or maybe you want to prune out some of these, you can just remove them and then add the URL to those specific substats uh, for Dang. URL. Awesome. That's awesome. Are there yeah. maybe one more question because I want to see the rest of this. Um, no. how, does, how does Lex perform with more technical topics? Are there certain topics or formats that Lex, did, that Lex is best for? I mean, it's AI. Like they're, it's amazing at being technical. I think um, if anything, and I actually forgot to do this. I, I tend to like to do this first strategic step. I turn on extended thinking and use 3.7. But like 3.7 is quite good at technical content. 
3.5, I think, is more vibey and like a better writer. So you can kind of pick and choose which LLM you click with the best. But yeah, AI is amazing at talking about technical topics. We also have, uh, I can get into it more, but we have these checks that you can customize, which is basically Grammarly. But you can have a, a check that you, you can say, I want this to simplify complex topics and it'll swap out. Um, technical jargon, if you want it to be more or less high level. Gotcha. That's awesome. Someone had asked, can you pick your LLM? And you just showed that you can pick. Yeah. yeah. And and, I mean, we just added these two, but we we pretty much have all the top commercial models. Awesome. Awesome. I guess we have a couple minutes left. Sammy, if there are more stuff you want to show us, let's do it. Or I have more questions for you. Yeah. I mean, I guess just super, super fast. um, Because there's an iteration step that's obviously really long. Something that we're building is you can highlight this command E and say, I want this to be two lines long and a lot more active and don't use any buzzwords. And you uh, transcribe to send, and this will have an apply button soon. So essentially, um, yeah, this is the suggestion. Soon it'll be like cursor where you just apply it. Um, and you could, it, it, this reads the whole context of the document. So I think that's kind of important to say because it's a pretty commonly used tool. But yeah, I'm happy to answer questions after. Dang, okay, super cool. Some of these, <laughs> some of these are long. So I may send... Uh, a few to you after, same if it's okay. Yeah, of course. Um, this is kind of an interesting one. How would you pitch Lex to someone who already uses uh, ChatGPT Canvas? I mean, they're fundamentally different products. So ChatGPT Canvas is basically going back and forth in a chat box and having AI write for you. And I think you could argue your way into something pretty solid, but it's um, it's a really hands-off writing experience that I think most people who really care about deep writing probably want more control over. Um, so the first one is just you can actually make the edits and then in tandem continue that conversation um, with the, a lot of the same kind of frictionless pieces of it spinning stuff up for you. And then also, I think the way that we handle background context is just better. Yeah. You know, I was, I was actually talking to someone the other day about how they use uh, ChatGPT and Google Docs together. And it's really, mm-hmm. it's kind of messy. It's like, you know, ChatGPT creates a brief, you dump it in Google Docs, work on it, dump it back in ChatGPT, iterate back. It's it's really like you could do all of that in Lex. One thing mm-hmm. I find myself doing in Lex all the time is using the checks. So the checks are ways to check for like very specific things. So there's some built-in ones like grammar, brevity, uh, passive voice, but then you can build your own also. I find that to be super helpful, especially as you get closer towards uh, like the 90% of the of whatever you're writing and you're like, okay, I want to start polishing this up. You start running the checks. And it cleans stuff up. So it doesn't actually change it for you, but it highlights it so you can make a decision on whether or not you want to change it. Yeah. Also, I I just, for uh, Nat, he had a a question that I I think it's just so fun to show off. So I'm going to, I'm going to show it off. Um, Nat said, is it possible to give it Google Docs type comments? So like something I really like is sometimes I'll be collaborating because this is a collaborative environment and I'll say something like, um, I think this should be half as long. And then you can just go at Lex help and it'll, (laughs) (laughs) it'll help. Um, so that's awesome. I I love that. Yeah. That's super cool. Cool. Sammy, thank you so much. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, Lex sponsors sponsored this event, which are super appreciative of that. Use the code SP15, go try it out yourself. I, I, I genuinely love this product. I really mean that. Like I said, I used it before you're a partner and I still use it almost every day. Um, so thank you for doing this. Thank you for coming to show us some of the cool new features. And I will also, um, I will point people, I'll put a link in the chat to um, uh, Lex founder, Nathan Bashes did a podcast with Tim Metz, our previous presenter from Animals recently about the product, the origin story, uh, some of his thoughts on like where all this is going. I thought it was a really interesting conversation. So I'll drop that in the chat also. Cool. Well, yeah, thanks so much. This was really fun. You're awesome, Sammy. Thank you so much.